Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is lecture video number 11, chapter 3, part 4. Let's review what we did last time. Last time we looked at the coefficient of variation, and this is a way to compare uh, the amount of variation between two different samples or two different populations. And the key word here is it's relative. So for a sample, we take the sample standard deviation divided by the sample mean. Now the sample standard deviation has the same units as the data and so does the mean, so the units cancel. So measures, relative measures, always uh, are unit free. They do not have any units. So um, this calculates the proportion of uh, variation relative to the mean and this is for population. So since they don't have any units, we can compare the numbers uh, apples for apples, so to speak. Okay, so in this lecture we're going to talk about another measure, uh, another uh, characteristic of variation using, uh, or how to describe how much variation there is, uh, using Chebyshev's theorem and interval. So we're covering this third objective for the section to calculate the minimum proportion of a population or a sample that is within k standard deviations of the mean using Chebyshev's uh, theorem. So in the, in the future, in chapter 7, we're going to learn how to get the precise or exact proportion or percentage of the data that lie within a certain number of standard deviations uh, on either side of the mean. But that's only for a bell-shaped distribution that's symmetrical called the normal distribution. Today, we're going to talk about any distribution, basically. There's only one or two uh, key uh, concepts we have to worry about, but you won't have to worry about it, okay? So what if the distribution is skewed? Or it's symmetric, but it's a different shape, or if it's just a completely different shape? Well, what can we do then? What we can do is we can use something called Chebyshev's theorem to determine the minimum, and that is a very important, uh, it can be a lot more but it has to be at least this percentage or proportion of the data or the population, depending on which we're, if we're using a sample or not, uh, that has to lie within uh, so many standard deviations on either side of the mean. Now, it has to be at least, it has to be greater than one standard deviation that we're talking about, okay? So this says for any population, any distribution, or any, uh, either a population or a sample, um, and as long as we have a constant that's greater than 1, it can be 1.1, but it has to be greater than 1, then the proportion of data that must, or, or a proportion of the population that has to be within k standard deviations on either side of the mean is at least, or this is the minimum, that's what it's saying, is 1 minus 1 over k squared. So um, let's look at this picture. So, unfortunately, I put the wrong one first. All right. So, here is for a sample. Okay. Uh, that's okay. Let's do the population first. So, mu is the mean. And then I go down, I take mu and I subtract k times sigma. That means I'm going down k standard deviations. I'm subtracting k standard deviations from the mean. So, I'm moving k standard deviations to the left of the mean. That's where this blue line on the left is. Over here, I've moved k standard deviations above the mean. So this is the mean plus k standard deviations, or k times sigma. And Chebyshev gives us the uh, minimum area that's shaded in here, the minimum area. Now I did draw this using uh, a bell shape or normal curve, but it doesn't have to be, okay? It can be any shape. It could, could be a U shaped if I want it. Uh, if it's a sample, then x bar is the mean, and we're moving k standard deviations to the left or below the mean by taking x bar minus k times s. So k times s is k standard deviations. And x bar plus ks means that I'm, I'm adding k standard deviations to the mean, so I've moved k standard deviations above the mean or k standard deviations to the right of the mean. And again, this uh, shaded region here, uh, Chebyshev tells us the minimum uh, percentage or proportion uh, of the population or of the sample in this case that has to be between these two values. The minimum. It can be more, 
but Chevy Shifts gives us the minimum. So now another way to look at this is to say, all right, um, for any data set, for any um, population, we have at least 75% of the data uh, within two standard deviations. So here, K is equal to two, and then Chevy Shift tells us that the minimum is 75%. Here, K is three, and the minimum is 88%. K is 4, the minimum is 93.8%. Okay, so again, Chebyshev uh, applies to any distribution with one catch or two catches. The mean and the standard deviation have to be defined and they have to be finite. Okay, so they can't be an infinite mean or infinite standard deviation. And believe it or not, there are some. Um, statistical distributions out there that don't have standard deviations or don't have means. So this is actually important in higher level statistics class, but not for us. I won't give you anything like that. So the Chevy Shift theorem, it tells us the minimum proportion or percentage of the data or the population that falls within K standard deviations of the mean. And that's either side of the mean like we just went over. And here is an example. We have a minimum of 88.9% of the data that is within three standard deviations of the mean. That's three standard deviations below the mean and three standard deviations above the mean. So if this is the minimum uh, is 88.9, then that also means that the maximum percentage of the data that's outside of three standard deviations on either side is 11.1% of the data. And we may think that that's outliers. Those values are outliers if we have a sample. And that would be very true if uh, we had the normal distribution, okay, the mound shape symmetric distribution. We definitely think they're outliers um, in that case. All right, but we'll get to that in chapter seven. So if you were, if you are in my face-to-face -face, uh, statistics class, then this is what you can have on your formula sheet. Now, if you're in my online class, you can put basically whatever you want, because even though I'm taking it up, it is open notes, open book uh, test for online, fully online. All right, so let's do an example. I've got this misnumbered. Sorry, this is example one for this um, lecture video. We want to know the minimum portion of the population of male college students that have heights between five foot four and six foot two inches. Uh, now, this is a population, and we're going to assume that it's the same as the population for all adult males, five foot nine inches, and the standard deviation is two and a half inches. So we're saying it's for the population, and this is the mean, and this is a standard deviation for the population. So the first step is to write down the symbols that you have. And then we need to figure out what K is. Now, we have to be the same number of standard deviations below the mean as we do above the mean, or this doesn't work. We can't use uh, Chebyshev. So if you if you notice, five foot nine has to be exactly in the middle of five foot four to six foot two. So we're talking about it has to be the same number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So you choose the mean and one of these values and subtract. And so in this case, I chose the mean minus the lower value, which gives me five inches. If I took six foot two minus five foot nine, the upper minus the mean, I'm still going to get five inches. And then we divide by our standard deviation. And again, inches divided by inches, those cancel, and I get two. So I know that K is two, and I go back to what I've written down for K equals two, or I plug in two into my formula for Chebyshev, and I find out that that corresponds to 0.75. If I plug it in the formula, I get 0.75. Since I asked for proportion, you should give it as a decimal. If I ask for percentage, then you can use 75%. Now, let's look at the other type of problem we can do with Chevy shifts. Let's say I know the mean, I know the standard deviation, and I want to know um, the values that, uh, that are the same number of standard deviations on either side of the mean. That's why I've said central values here. Uh, that have a minimum of 88.9% of the heights of male college males uh, between these values. So 88.9% of the values are going to be between these two values we're looking for. So first again, write down the mean and the standard deviation, the symbols, 
and we know that the minimum percentage is 88.9 and when we look back at what we've been given we can find out that that value of k is equal to 3 so we didn't have to do any algebra here so the minimum value that we're, that we're going to end up with is mu minus k times sigma so we need to calculate that we have mu we have sigma and now we have k so we plug in uh, 5 foot 9 3 times 2 and a half 5 foot 9 minus 7 and a half gives me 5 foot 1 and a half inches. That's the minimum value that I'm looking for. The maximum value I'm looking for, the upper value, is mu plus k sigma. So it's the same values but a plus sign in between. And I get 6 foot 4 and a half inches. So my answer is the two values are 5 foot 1 inch to 6 foot 4 inches. And this is written as an interval. And so use the brackets here that says it includes those values and a comma and we put the smallest value here the largest value here okay remember you need to scan in your lecture notes before midnight on the due date that's listed on your course calendar make sure the notes are neat because they're for you update your formula sheet with your uh, Chevy Chef's information if you have any questions and by all means please you're always welcome at virtual office hours if you just can't make it to virtual office hours then please email me I'm happy to uh, help you see you next time